What is gamification? The opportunity of gamification in driving impulse buying behavior by Mohamed El Beiti, Nada Selsabila Suardi, and Nguyen Lokbak. So the first hypothesis that we have is that gamification can be used to drive impulsive buying by cultivating humans' intrinsic motivation. So first of all, what is about the intrinsic motivation? According to the self-determination theory, the human motivation is actually categorized into two types, which are the extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. And the intrinsic motivation itself reverts to those activities you do because you enjoy the activity itself. The intrinsic motivation is the one that has been known to be able to stimulate the unplanned wants of humans, the hedonic reason, and the curiosity of impulsive purchases. So what can we do to spark this intrinsic motivation in our users? So according to the theory, in order to cultivate intrinsic motivation, there are three psychological needs that have to be satisfied, including the needs of autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Simply put, gamification has the elements that can fulfill these needs. This is why many marketers and UX designers nowadays begin to see the potential of using gamification in order to create enjoyable and more engaging product experiences for their users. So I believe that almost all of you are very familiar with points, badges, avatars, and leaderboards. The, there are actually tons of uh, game features to mention, but these are the most common elements that you can find in your, probably in your favorite video games. Although these seem to be external rewards to you, they are meant to be internalized so that users will experience the motivation as internally caused. Then how these elements can affect intrinsic motivation? So for someone to be able to feel competent, they need to have a sense of being capable to tackle the task and challenges they encounter. Therefore, points and badges here are given as completion of the task and serve to give direct feedback for incentive purpose. So what about the leaderboards and avatars? Here, leaderboards could support the needs of relatedness by facilitating social connection and competition, while avatars, it can be provided as self-expression. Through customizing their own avatars, users can express their creativity and to get the autonomy to define how they would want their avatars to look like. From the crisis of the 70s, the end of industrial capitalism, as it was known until the until then began. It is not that the mines, the, the steel industry, the mechanical industry, the textile industry, or the chemical industry ceased to exist. Nevertheless, the industry symbolized by the traditional factory, the chimney smoke, and the discipline of work. Taylorism and Fordism was disappearing to give way to a new social reality. The main reasons for this were imitation and new trends in demand, which involve replacing the functional value with attractive value, and this fundamentally through the social phenomenon of fashion. On the other hand, people like to differentiate themselves with the appearance of new technologies. This was already possible. The subjects are less and less willing to consume standard products, and this means the appearance of the planning of consumption obsolescence, where products do not become obsolete because they lose their functional value, but because they stop becoming attractive. In the post-industrial society, economic growth is linked, above all, to the need to conquer new markets. It is a society that needs more consumers than workers, hence the increasing importance of the ledger industries. From this point of view, subjects tend to stop being seen as individuals and become mere social functions. In the consumer society, strategies have been developed to increase consumption and provide an outlet of, for production, such as the development of different sales methods, such as higher purchase and credit cards. Another of these fundamental strategies is the gamification and social influence involved in most of today's brands to make people buy their products in large quantities, which make the social trend based on a merely uh, psychological concept that falls on the consumer to achieve the objective of the brands. The elements of the game take place in the planning of new social strategies for consumers to increase their interest in buying in mass, which many authors have enshrined as the breaking of a cultural paradigm that oversees the gap in the current trend of the average consumer. Marketing experts know very well that the appearance 
of the product's external image is a sign of prestige and distinction. Hence the importance of brands and other external signs of the product, the shop, the designer signature, or even high price in sales strategies. Frequently, the product's image counts more than the quality or its usefulness when bought by the consumers. The study of consumer behavior is of interest to society as, as a whole since we are all consumers. From the company's perspective, marketers must know everything that affects their market to design successful commercial policies. Knowing consumer tastes and preferences will help to segment the market correctly. Behavior refers to the consumer's internal and external dynamics, which take place when they seek to satisfy their needs with goods and services. Applied to market, it is the decision process and the physical activity to search, evaluate, and acquire goods and services to satisfy consumer needs on impulse. Okay, so now we're moving on to third hypothesis, which is gamification effects on mood and how a positive mood can affect impulse buying behavior. First of all, to start with, creating a positive consumer attitude toward products or services is one of the main objectives of gamification, since gamification can improve the quality of the trading system by recreating it with the features of playing games, so they can motivate it, the consumers to make the action expected from them. We also found out that gaming practices that characterize gamification contribute to the enjoyment of consumers and their feelings of their own autonomy which can lead to the increase of customer loyalty to the brand. Talking about the increase of loyalty to the brand, there's an interesting fact that I've just learned, which is a decrease in customer outflow can have a strong positive impact on the financial well-being of the company because it can minimize or eliminate the problem of outflow and increase impulsiveness when consumers make decisions. To be more specific, a decrease in customer outflow by 5% can increase the profit of 25 to 90%. The effect of gamification on mood progress can be divided into three stages, which are affordance, psychological outcomes, and behavioral outcomes, which can be explained in a marketing perspective. Affordance means game elements such as reward or missions they prompt emotional experiences such as involvement or enjoyment of particular products or services. The feelings of enjoyment or involvement affect the mood of a consumer as gamification expects them to result in such behavior as increased awareness of particular products or service. Gamification, consumer's mood, and impulsive buying behavior are interrelated concepts, which means by applying gamification on business, the consumers positively perceive a service that is more interesting and fascinating and deep emotional connection arise between them and the brand, which enhance the positivity of their relationship. Accordingly, this interaction enhances the customer desire to purchase the product that the company advertise or provide. The extraordinary trading experience that develop through gamification can have a significant overall positive effect on buying behavior. So it is typical for modern society to pay attention to the emotional aspect and the positive experience that forms a good mood, right? So in this case, the impulsiveness of behavior can be regulated by analyzing the client emotions and introducing uh, consumers into an effective state, which can achieve through gamifications, right, to have a more practical understanding. Now we're moving on to research on case studies of NADA. Now that we have seen so many ways of how gamification could increase impulsive buying tendency, let's test the truth by analyzing the gamification campaign of the mm. largest e-commerce brand in Southeast Asia called Shopee. So here, um, I'm about to show you one of the most successful gamification implementations from Shopee, which is a game called Shopee Planting or Shopee Tanam in Indonesian. So this game is built in their mobile application and it comes with an interesting um, background of farming and planting and actually the main goal for users is to be able um, to get various rewards and gifts after they have successfully harvested the plants. And what is interesting actually, as you can see in the first picture here, the users have the ability to choose between different types of seeds. And these different seeds actually yield different prices. And so for this reason, I think by having the ability to choose themselves, they will 
eventually feel that um, have that feeling of autonomy, right? And the game also has a lot of uh, features such as leaderboard, um, progress bar, uh, and levels. Uh, so you can see uh, in the third picture here that the system actually breaks the experience into different levels, right? And so through this, users can have that, you know, a continuous sense of mastery, right? And thus increasing the feel of competence. Um, another feature is the leaderboard, as I mentioned before. And this leaderboard feature was actually aimed to uh, satisfy the needs of relatedness. Because as you may know how it operates, leaderboard uh, leaderboard facilitates users, you know, to enable users um, to compare themselves with other players' scores and thus, you know, facilitating uh, competition and social interaction. Another gamification implementation um, is in the form of SNS or social networking service built in the app, um, which is called Shopee Feed. This this one really highlights the social social aspect of gamification. Just like how other SNS operate, it provides the means for social interactions to happen and for users to gain public recognition. In the system here, uh, users can share um, the photos of them wearing or using the products they bought at Shopee, and other users can also express um, their judgment in the form of likes and comments. By receiving recognition from likes and comments, a user uh, can receive feedback on how how well he or she has conformed to those expectations of other users. Beside the case study of Shopee, I believe that the case of Taobao and Tmall is also a typical example of applying gamification into the business that have gained significant success. So the two companies, for those of you who don't know, is owned by Alibaba Group. So they have leveraged gamification through the use of promotional concepts known as Double Eleven. The companies initiated this online promotional activity in 2019 and ever since they have recorded booming sales because of impulse purchasing behaviors. So how do they do that? First of all, Double Eleven events were first introduced in 2019 in November 11, right? So they use mobile platform and social media to permit users to invite friends, relatives, or even strangers to join the platform and click like. Participants in this activity can earn up to $148 million, and they said million dollars right here, yeah, in red envelopes, depending on game elements, such as reward points and badges from other participants, liking amounts on Tmall and Taobao. So Tmall and Taobao recorded gross merchandise volume of about $1.5 billion in just two minutes during their uh, 2018 double 11 shopping event and in 24 hours the platform had recorded about 32 billion dollars in total sales volume the batch upgrades and on the other hand provide enjoyment experiences through signifying accomplishment and graphical icons that increase recognitions or enhance the online reputation of the shopper all right so as discussed earlier, gamification increased consumer participations, which subsequently enhance the unique experiences. The gamification element is used by Taobao and Tmall are useful stimuli that can impact a consumer perceived enjoyment. Reflective and rational purchasing, as it is usually understood, is capable of using specific criteria of evaluation when choosing a product. To the extent that we do not sell the tangible elements of rational comparison, we enter the world of subjectivity and such the objective rational criteria fade away. If there are no objective criteria, the association that entrepreneurs want us to perceive of their products usually prevail. Such associations go far beyond the product's reality, not only because of their symbolic or self-realizing nature, but even elements that we consider to be basic, such as safety or food can be decided by such uh, associative criteria than by purely real ones. The sale of intangible produce, a consumption of desires, dreams, and unrealities that provoke and promote what we know as impulse buying. It is important to emphasize the present investigation opens up the whole line of work where we 
where consumption by gamification is contemplated from another theoretical perspective. This entails initiating a series of phases to complete the theoretical body developed in this study. All this opens up the possibility of being able to give a social response to a phenomenon that is not very well understood globally. And that allows the consumers to have a more satisfactory beha behaviors related to the consumptions that he develops on a, on a daily. Future research in this study focuses on obtaining measures of subjective feelings and sensations uh, associated with shopping, as many of them we believe are capable of explaining the phenomenon related to hendoic consumption. So little studied in literature and that becomes the future of consumer research. Furthermore, the study of conceptionary shopping allows the consumer to reflect on many of their consumer acts, which largely shapes the consumer's post-purchase guilt. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation.